Hi, this is Steve Michelotti from the Azure Government Engineering Team. I'm joined today by Scott Grunemeyer, a cloud solution architect from our state and local government practice at Microsoft. Thanks for joining, Scott. Thanks, Steve. Glad to be here. So today we're going to talk about enabling central IT to become a cloud broker. That's quite an interesting uh, phrase. What do we mean by that? Give us a little background before we start our discussion here. Well, most state and local governments are organized to have a central IT department providing ubiquitous IT services to them so that they can get efficiencies of scale when providing those IT services. Okay. So what is the opportunity for central IT, specifically with like a government cloud, like Azure government, um, compared to you know, their own data center? Well, so central ITs have been providing data center services for years to their uh, constituent customers. Uh, but with the advent of the cloud and Azure government today, we're able to provide uh, much more diversity of services. We have eight government regions announced today so that the central IT can enable uh, true disaster recovery across multiple regions. There's cost savings to be had with moving uh, common services to Azure government, such as virtual machine hosting or networks. And along with that, we can enhance their security and compliance with our uh, security and compliance offerings within the Azure government. So if I'm a central IT person, not only can I uh, empower my customers, but I can say, hey, I'm bringing multiple data center regions to your workloads. I couldn't do that with just my little data center sitting right here. Yeah, we're really enabling the central ITs to bring the scale of, of Microsoft and Azure government tools to their customers and provide them, which is a level of services that many state and local governments haven't been able to afford uh, to today. All right, that sounds great, Scott. So at this point, uh, I guess my question is, how could central ITs best serve their customers who want to use Azure government? Uh, so central IT can help set up the contracting uh, standards for the for their customers, and they can do it in either a centralized model or an autonomous model, where they can provide a framework for their customers to buy Azure cloud services from Microsoft, um, and then you know help them understand the bill, uh, help set standards, and really you know start their customers down that cloud journey. Central ITs can also help define standards for their customers. Uh, we've provided an enterprise framework out there for our customers where they can set up the contracting, help set up naming standards, uh, set up audit policy um, out there, and then enable customers to do things like tag their resources so they can enable uh, bill back and show back to their customers, which has traditionally been a hard thing to do for central IT. Uh, they can help automate the deployment. They can centralize security with our Azure Security Center and help define role-based access controls uh, for their customers to help provide greater security. Uh, interesting. So this is all uh, by way of the Azure Scaffold framework? Yes, the Azure Enterprise Scaffold framework was developed by Microsoft to provide financial and technical governance framework for our customers so they can you know, get started faster with the cloud and, and have the assurance they need that they're doing it the right way. You know, a lot of things I hear a lot of times are, I'm scared that if I start enabling people to provision resources in Azure, I won't have control over it, I won't know what's happening, I won't know how much it's costing. But what you're describing here sounds like it's really getting control over a lot of those items. Yeah, we're really helping our customers to understand the difference between a capital expenditure model and an operational expenditure model so that they can work with their finance departments and their IT departments to enable processes that work for them so they can move forward in the cloud with the assurance that they're going to spend what they want and get the efficiencies that they were looking for. All right, sounds great. What else you got here? So central IT can also set standards around networking and network security practices and then create templates to give to their customers to get them going quickly with a sound network and security platform that they can build on top of with the assurance that it meets the central IT uh, standards and they're going to the cloud with the best possible uh, practice. So it's like they're building out the virtual data center itself here. Exactly. Okay. All right, great. So this makes a lot of sense. What are the other types of services that a central IT can expand their portfolio with? Yeah, this is really exciting. Central IT, you know, are always looking for a way to better serve their customers, to raise the standards within their municipality, within their organization. Uh, and so one of the pieces that we can help bring to the table is compliance as a service. So it's like the IT is, com is providing compliance as a service as part of their portfolio. 
Yeah, so they can, the central IT can ride upon Microsoft's compliance work that we've done with Azure and Azure government, and then take that to their customers with uh, a blueprint on how to best enable that. So if a customer needs to meet IRS 1075 or CGIS or FedRAMP, uh, we have our Azure Blueprint program out there where the central IT can understand what is provided from a compliance standpoint from Microsoft and what are the com customer's responsibilities along with that as well. And then we provide proactive um, prescriptive guidance on how to implement solutions in our Azure Government Cloud to meet those compliance standards so that the central IT and the departments that are utilizing Azure have the assurance that their workloads are meeting the compliance requirements. So, so it really empowers central IT where at the same time minimizing their burden. Absolutely. Um, you know, compliance is a uh, task that requires a lot of thought and effort to go into it. And, you know, by utilizing Microsoft's compliance work that we've already done with Azure government and by centralizing that work, it creates a lot of efficiencies and increases security yeah. with their departments. Okay. What are some other items for the portfolio? So cloud networking as a service is another really big opportunity for central IT. ExpressRoute is Microsoft's dedicated networking connectivity service to Azure and Azure government. It provides a 99.95 uptime SLA, and that's what our customers are really looking for, that assurance that there's an uptime guarantee on their network connectivity to the cloud so that they can feel confident in putting mission-critical workloads up into the cloud. Okay, great. Central IT can help out that process by providing uh, a single set of physical circuits to reduce the cost of the overall cost of Express Route while providing individual logical circuits for their customers who want to consume that. It creates a lot of efficiency and it helps central IT control the networking and bandwidth utilization across all of their services. So central IT can still sort of be the hero of the day, so to speak, whereas not having to build all this infrastructure themselves. Exactly. So networking is an, often an area that the customer departments struggle with, and central IT can really come in and assist with this and be the hero. Okay. Along with that, central IT can play a role in providing centralized cloud and on-premises security monitoring. So with our Azure Security Center product, central IT can monitor servers across on-premises and in Azure or third-party cloud services and roll that up into single dashboards to look at things like patch status across servers across their entire municipality. All right, so hold on a second. You just said something about uh, central IT can monitor resources that are not only in Azure but also on-prem? Yeah, exactly. So we can create a single vision of the truth with patch status, anti-malware status, attack vectors coming from uh, known bad entities, so that when uh, issues arise like NIMDA or uh, other you know, malware that got out there, there, there's a patch that could stop that. We can look at the patch status across the entire estate of servers in their municipality and report back whether it's in Azure, a third-party cloud, or on-premises. That's awesome. And it also works across Windows and Linux, so you know, we're, we're supporting open source and Windows environments as well. Okay, great. We also have additional monitoring tools that can help monitor the health of services uh, across on-premises in the cloud beyond security. So we can look at things like utilization, we can look at compliance, we can look at uh, audit standards with that as well. Um, so we can really you know, help give central IT and their customer departments the comfort in knowing that what's happening in their cloud and on-premises through a single dashboard. Awesome, okay, so they're starting to build out their portfolio pretty well here, let's keep going. Yeah, so business continuity and disaster recovery. Uh, most state and local uh, governments have trouble with true disaster recovery. As we've seen with the disasters that have hit in Florida and Texas and California over the recent months, you know, really having a good cloud disaster recovery plan is essential to maintaining continuity of operations across government. So with Azure government and Azure site recovery, we have the ability to provide true disaster recovery um, across VMware, Hyper-V, physical servers, Windows, Linux, you name it, we cover it. We can get their mission critical data to the cloud and up and running very quickly. In addition, we have Azure backup services out there to help get their normal backup data off to the cloud at a very low uh, storage rate, or we can connect up third-party backup services as well. The important message here is that we can get 
the state and local government's mission critical data that they need to operate off premises greater than 500 miles away so that if that disaster hits, they have the assuredness that it's going to have the ability to keep working going forward. Yeah, you mentioned hurricanes, but there's also wildfires and everything else we're seeing these days. Yeah, not to mention broken water pipes. Yeah. Right? I mean, most of the disasters that happen don't naturally have to come from natural disasters. It could be simple human error that causes these things. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Another service that Central IT can help with is enabling cloud migrations. A lot of their customer departments um, are looking at the value of the cloud and say, hey, I want to go, but how do I do that? Uh, Central IT can come in and do cloud assessments and help them understand the value of moving to the cloud, how much money they can save, and whether an IaaS model or a PaaS model is right for that particular workload. And in addition to that, they can help them determine which migration option is right for them to which service. Uh, so, you know, moving to the cloud is not always hard, but there's a lot of information involved. And so having central IT help with the, enable those cloud migrations is a real value add service. Yeah, so central IT becomes, we mentioned the hero of the day, but also really the enabler of the agencies, of the organization, and, you know, providing all this value to their, their customers. So it sounds like central IT is acting a lot like a system integrator along with providing cloud services. Absolutely. At Microsoft, we've developed a lot of materials to help system integrators and central IT develop a cloud consulting practice. We have a cloud consulting framework out there that helps them define strategy, look for skills when they're hiring and training, operationalize that cloud consulting, and go to market, in this case, go to their constituent departments and help them optimize their cloud services. We have a site out there, aka.ms slash practice playbooks. At the practice playbooks site, uh, the central IT departments can come out and look at the different playbooks we have for developing cloud application development, data platform, cloud infrastructure and management, enterprise mobility, security, AI practice. And there's prescriptive guidance out there to really help them develop programs to go to their customer departments and do successful consulting with them to help themselves and the customer departments better adopt the cloud. All right, well, this sounds like a win-win if I ever heard one. So how can central ITs get started? So the central IT departments should reach out to their account rep and ask how they can get started with becoming a cloud broker. In addition, here's a list of links around Azure government that they can look at to become more familiar with the service. Okay, well, thanks for joining us, Scott. This has definitely been very educational for me. So um, lots of great information I think we've shared in this session. So this has been Steve Michelotti along with Scott Grunemeyer talking about how to enable central IT to become a cloud broker. Thanks everyone for watching.